Now question 10. Now when you're asked to do the inverse function, most people tend to use this method just here. So add 1 to better. What I'm trying to get to is I'm trying to get x equals. So we do y add 1 equals 4x and then divide by 4. Divide everything by 4. Now I always feel slightly unhappy about this method, but it's quite neat and it does work quite nicely. Now that's not actually the inverse function. The inverse function we need to write like this because we're talking about an x in there. So it's actually x plus 1 over 4. Now this thing here, this was just to allow us to kind of move it around and change it. So yeah, it is a little bit confusing thinking, oh wait, it's a y, I'm going to change it for an x. Right? It was just to allow us to, to reverse the process. Now part b says, talks about a different function. So we've got function g. Now it says that given that f and then g2 is equal to 12, work out the value of k. Well, g2, so we're going to have, so g2 would be, um, we're going to have k times 2 squared. So all we're doing is we're just trying to work out what g2 is equal to. I've just substituted in the 2 for the x. So 2 squared is 4, so that's 4k. So f g2 is the same as saying what's, so we know this bit, that's 4k. So actually we're going to do this, we're going to replace g2 with 4k. So I'm going to rewrite what function f is, but instead of putting x in there, we're going to put 4k. So we can write 4 and then 4k and then take away 1. So that's obviously 16k take away 1. Now we know the whole thing is equal to 12. So if we take away, oh, so if we add 1 to both sides rather, so 16k equals 13, divide by the 16, so k equals, and again, if you want to write it as a decimal, you can write it as a decimal, but mathematicians prefer fractions. So k equals 13 over 6.